Greetings, First English family and friends. Welcome to Tuesday, March March 8th, 2022. It's about 24 degrees here at the house. Sun is shining, as you can see in the back, maybe kind of, sort of. Um, you see the big pine tree right there. Uh, pretty soon we'll be out on the deck doing these devos, so you can see the birds and the bird feeder um, and all that stuff. So, uh, check-in time. How are you all doing? Hope and pray that you are healthy and safe and well. Leave a comment or a question below if you have one. I do have my coffee here in my uh, the, the uh, cup I got from the Wapaka Levines. So, other uncles and then me. So <laughs> thanks to them and cheers, church. <sighs> okay. So our devotion again comes from Grace Unbounded, our devotion book for Lent. And the writer is Troy Trough Grubin. I think he's still writing, pretty sure. Yeah, uh, professor at Wartburg Seminary. And the picture today is, oh, sorry, two workers with uh, ladling up some soup. Uh, good day for soup today, 24 degrees. So our scripture reading is Luke 6, 6 to 10. So we've skipped a little bit in Luke uh, from uh, chapter 4 to chapter 6. Jesus entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to, the, to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. The uh, to ponder part is a quote from a book by Rachel Held Evans. The uh, book is titled Inspired. I have that book. I haven't read it yet. It's on my TBR, to be read list. Um, I think it's at church. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That might be a, a good Lenten thing for me is to, to read a book. I haven't really done anything uh, Lent wise, giving up or taking on, but maybe I'll read Rachel's book. Anyway, the two ponder part quote from her. Anytime the Bible is used to justify the oppression and exploitation of others, we have strayed far from the God who brought Israel out of Egypt. Again, anytime the Bible is used to justify the oppression and exploitation of others, we have strayed far from the God who brought Israel out of Egypt. And the Devo is titled, The Bigger Picture. Jesus is on the side of life and doing good, period. Stories like this portray the religious leaders religious leaders in Jesus' experience negatively, but they were not scoundrels. They simply valued specific practices of faith highly, too highly, and their focus on specifics kept them from seeing the bigger picture. We are not much different. We too prefer the predictable over the challenging. We too want a Jesus who fits our expectations. We too want a faith that is manageable not radical. We too prefer a predictable structure over an unpredictable Holy Spirit. In many ways, Jesus comforted the afflicted and afflicted the comfortable. Our challenge is to embrace this Jesus, including the ways he challenges us, messes up our routines, and calls us to a better life. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to start the par that paragraph again, and after a cup of coffee, another sip of coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. Cheers again, church. Okay, back to the demo. In many ways, Jesus comforted the afflicted and afflicted the comfortable. Our challenge is to embrace this Jesus, including the way he challenges us, messes up our routines, and calls us to a better life. After all, this Jesus came to bring good to give life, and to save. Our challenge is simply to welcome him. I 
think uh, Professor Trough Grubin has a point there. We, we like predictable. Um, we don't like change. <laughs> we, and especially after this past two years of, of pandemic and all the changes that have come with it, it hasn't been predictable and it has, it has been difficult. Um, but Jesus has worked still through the pandemic as we, as we strove and tried to keep people safe, as we switched to online worship just to keep the word out there. As I started doing these daily devos to keep in touch and, and come uh, share with you a word of word of God each day. Um, yeah, it's it's been challenging, and Jesus has been there with us. I like that last line. Jesus came to bring good, to give life, and to save. Our challenge is to welcome him. So, this day, your homework assignment is. To, to, to welcome Jesus, to welcome the radical Jesus into your life. Maybe, maybe that's too big of a step, but at least open the door, okay? And crack the window and allow, allow God's Spirit to move in you in a, in a new and different and unpredictable and challenging way. How about that? So be a strong heart, good courage to stay to your church. Keep yourself safe and healthy and well. Wash your hands, wear your mask, distance, all that stuff. We are... Get, I th I'm guessing we'll probably be over the past two weeks in Marathon County um, on the on the on the on the Marathon County Health Department website. We'll probably be in the medium range, which is really really good, and uh, so we can start um, start ending start ending. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, I need some more coffee, I think. <laughs> anyway, let's pray and get out of this. Okay, let's pray. O oh, Jesus Christ, enter our lives, change our hearts, and reorient, reorient us to better things. Give us life, and call us again to follow you. Amen. Yeah, had a little brain cramp at the end of that, but hey, we prayed and we got out of it. So blessings upon you this day. I wish you peace.